Hello, I'm Dr. David Green, CEO of Preferred Pain Center here in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm just next to Phoenix, Arizona in Scottsdale at the waterfront. The Scottsdale Waterfront Project is about five, maybe six years old, and it's not a large body of water, maybe 30, 40 yards wide, but what they did was around it they built a lot of trendy nightclubs, restaurants, some condo complexes. They just made it very attractive. There's some great looking artwork down at the end um, as well. Scottsdale itself is home to about 220,000 people, and back in the 1990s, it was named one of the United States' most livable cities. Some people in Scottsdale laugh at that because if it was most livable, then why is it one of the most expensive? But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Scottsdale itself has uh, multiple uh, five-star resorts, uh, more so than anywhere in the country except for New York City. You have the Phoenician, you have the Four Seasons, the Fairmont, there's a couple others. Um, across the street here, you have one of the 20 largest malls in the United States called Scottsdale Fashion Square. It is so large that a few years ago they really had nowhere else to build on that side of the street, so they actually spanned it over to this side of the street, which is where Nordstrom is now. The topic for today is reflex sympathetic dystrophy. Reflex sympathetic dystrophy is a term that also has spawned numerous other terms. Uh, sympathetically maintained pain, um, let's see, sympathetic, a complex um, sympathetic mediated pain, and there's quite a few different terms that go into that. Um, some people call it a wastebasket term because it's, there's a lot of things that go, can be defined as having reflex sympathetic dystrophy. Reflex sympathetic dystrophy is a condition that could be in the upper extremity, the lower extremity, um, and it involves something where an insult occurred, meaning it could be a surgical insult. A patient could have a carpal tunnel surgery um, and it could spark up a reflex sympathetic dystrophy. A patient could have a knee arthroscopy or a total knee replacement or, or any kind of an orthopedic type of surgery um, or it could be a trauma. You could have a, uh, uh, back in Rhode Island, we used to have patients who put their hands underneath snow blowers um, and they would get some trauma to their hands and after it healed up, they might have a reflex sympathetic dystrophy. The thought process is that something in that trauma, whether it was a surgical incident or just a car accident or a snow blower, uh, caused an uptick in the sympathetic nerve system and it won't shut, shut off, it won't stop. So things that happen is patients get this hypersensitivity where let's say it's around the knee, a patient had a total knee replacement, the knee might be, you might just barely brush the knee with a sheet or your finger or something like that and a patient might be jumping off the table or out of the bed. It might hurt that badly. Um, and it's not faking it, it's real. The sympathetic system is in such amount of overdrive that it is causing a patient an inhumane amount of pain. So if a patient needs pain medication that is way above and beyond what you would think that they need for the, what you see on an MRI or an x-ray or on the wound, you have to think about sympathetically mediated pain. Another thing that you might see is skin discoloration around the area of, of the symptoms. Um, there might be some x-ray changes where you might start to see what's called osteopenia or some eroding away of some of the bone quality. Um, there's various uh, symptoms and signs that you can look at to try to uh, be effectively put a patient into that diagnosis. Well, the question becomes, okay, now you define that a patient has a reflex sympathetic dystrophy, what do you do about it? A lot of times they hurt too much to go in and start doing physical therapy and active desensitization to try and make that pain sort of simmer down. Well, there's a lot of different treatments for reflex sympathetic dystrophy, and what that usually means is that there's not one particular treatment that works effectively well. You know, you have 20 different treatments. If one of them work really well, you just have really the one and maybe a few others. So one of the things that can work exceptionally well for a lower extremity reflex sympathetic, uh, lumbar sympathetic dystrophy reflex sympathetic, is a um, lumbar sympathetic block. What a pain doctor can do, and ours does this is they can on x-ray see where they need to go in the lumbar spine and inject steroid and some numbing medicine in the area of the sympathetic nervous system to effectively lower the pain that's coming out 
of the sympathetic nerves to kind of cool it down a little bit. If you can take the patient's pain from a 10 out of 10 to a 6 or a 4 out of 10 temporarily, then maybe that patient will be able to start physical therapy and some desensitization kinds of treatments. What you really want to do is to stop the cycle. It's a continual cycle of sympathetic nervous system discharge and the discharge is continuous so that the pain will not stop. If you can stop the cycle even for a week, a few days, you can get the physical therapist working on the patient, you can get the chiropractor working on the patient and you know working on some desensitization types of things and maybe, just maybe, you can stop the RSD. So that in and of itself can be a dramatic help. You can also do some blocks in the uh, cervical spine area to help like axillary blocks and things like that to help if the patient has an upper extremity uh, RSD problem. Our pain doctors do those at Preferred Pain Center. They're board certified and fellowship trained. Check us out on the web, www.preferredpaincenter.com. You can put a slash blog on the end to check out our blog. You can call us today for an appointment at 602-507-6550. We take all major medical insurances. I'm Dr. David Green, Preferred Pain Center. Your pain stops here.